After giving a stern warning to NATO, Russia has followed through on its threat. Just hours after Germany and the U.S. announced they would be sending their most advanced tanks to Ukraine, a wave of Russian missiles struck Kiev and cities in the country's south. Ukraine's prime minister confirmed the attacks, saying at least 55 missiles had struck the country, mostly hitting energy facilities and power stations. The barrage followed Wednesday's announcement that the U.S. would be sending its M1 Abrams tanks while Germany pledged its Leopard 2s. The move reverses nearly a year of hesitancy by NATO over fears the delivery would further antagonize Russia. Ukraine, which had been asking for the tanks since the start of the conflict, is also lobbying for F-16 jets. But German Chancellor Olaf Scholz shut down that option, saying the fighter aircraft were not on the table. So will these latest moves by the West bring Ukraine much-needed help, or will it further provoke Russian attacks? And I'm joined by a special guest. He is a career diplomat and former Ukrainian deputy foreign minister who has had diplomatic postings in Turkey dating back to 2013. In July 2021, he became Ukraine's top envoy in Ankara. I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Vasily Bodnar, Ukraine's ambassador to Turkey. Mr. Ambassador, thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So the war in Ukraine is nearing its one year mark. What's the latest on both the diplomatic front and on the ground? Thank you very much for the invitation. So for me, it's a great honor. Uh, the war is going on, war for independence. It's for us. We are fighting for ourselves. We're defending our land. And we have a great successes during the last year of war, mm -hmm. uh, but also with the assistance of the international community. So now the world understands how dangerous this war is for the world security. And uh, this assistance which we're receiving from our friends is really necessary for establishing peace. Mm -hmm. So because now it's the only way to set up the uh, just peace on the ground of territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. So how will the latest message, uh, ma massive package of uh, weapons announced by the US and NATO allies impact the course of the conflict? So is Ukraine satisfied it is, it by is, it? It is not the conflict. It's uh, ordinary war, unfortunately. And uh, to stop this war, we need to win this war. Because otherwise, if to think about some other options, uh, it might spread out to the other uh, areas or to other time. So let's not postpone and finish the, the job here, liberate our territories, it will help, for sure, and uh, establish a peace which will be ground on the law, but not on the force. Mm -hmm. That's the story. But now the, the other side of the conflict, I mean Russia, they are not uh, loving the international law, they are breaking down every time, everywhere, and they need to be brought to responsibility as well. That's so, the story. Mm -hmm. So after weeks of indecision, the U.S. and Germany have finally approved uh, the delivery of tanks for use in Ukraine. So are they going to change the course of the war? Are they going to be a game changer, you think? You know, Why are they so crucial? You know, for, for them, for the very beginning of war, they, they were very calm and patient about supporting Ukraine. So uh, that, that was only because of our victories, because of our resilience. And it is our war. We are fighting. Our soldiers are dying there. And our... Uh, and the population is suffering. So it is not anything about the West. It is about us. And they understand that that is the only way to support Ukraine and to bring peace is to support Ukraine for the victory. That's the story. It is a game changer for the battlefield and for the pe uh, future settlement as the conflict in the whole. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the story. But victorious Ukraine bring peace in the world. If vice versa, then the war will be spread out. And we couldn't say that World War II is, is not knocking the door. Let's, let's look at that. So would these tanks help you to gain victory in this yes, war? Yes, we believe so. We believe so, and we believe that it will also open the gates for the other supplies, which is uh, necessary for, uh, for yes, defending I've been, Ukraine. I've been hearing, so will Ukraine push for Western fourth-generation fighter jets like F-16s yes. after securing supplies you know, of the main battle tanks? At the beginning of war, we have only a couple of uh, anti-tank rifles. Mm -hmm. or anti-tank uh, missiles. Now we're having a lot of Western equipments and it's also thanks to our resistance, to our possibilities to, to be strong on the battlefield and also to present that we are capable to fight a new generation war and present an example for the world mm -hmm. that for justice should be def defended. Uh, that's why we also will be asking for next generation fighters, we will be asking for other equipment which is necessary to peace, settle peace. We wouldn't like to be armed country, we would like to set a peace that's the aim. So how has the latest corruption scandal uh, linked to the procurement of wartime supplies already impacted your country's position? You know, we have been fighting with corruption for the whole of our uh, independence. So it's a long story, but now 
I would say that we are the champions in creating the uh, anti-corruption institutions. And uh, now everybody knows about everything. What you have, <laughs> what assets you have, and uh, how many salaries you get. So it's, it was published every week about your, what, your incomes. So uh, now it is uh, the next um, example of visibility and openness of Ukrainian society and Ukrainian authorities, which are ready to fight the corruption very quickly and to be decisive if someone is uh, charged in doing something wrong in taking, particularly in wartime, which is really a, a second front. Because mm -hmm. the one front is the battlefield and the second front is the corruption fighting. So you say uh, corruption is widespread in Ukraine, but could this, could this latest scandal uh, be a hurdle uh, for the transfer of advanced weapons uh, to your country? Like, because you're talking that. about the fighter jets. I mean, look, if, how's that going if to, to play out? If to look at the supplies of weapons, how they are used, we have a number of control systems which um, let's say, delivering the exact results on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So successful uh, results on the battlefield show that the, the weapons is used correctly. The other side of the story about corruption, I didn't say that it is widespread in Ukraine. I said that we are okay. fighting for, mm -hmm. with corruption like every other country. Yes. And now the visibility of every corrupt act of any public servants became visible for the whole society and the world. Mm -hmm. So it is the openness. So we reach it this period of time to get this uh, corruption scandals open and resolve it quickly. So the decision... How do you think uh, is the yes? president uh, handling it so far? Very quickly. So the decision was adopted very quickly that those who are having something to do with that, uh, they are dismissed from the post and then mm -hmm. the relevant authorities will take care about them. Are they guilty or not? Because the only court could decide. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's the, the procedures and the law enforcement agencies are working very quickly. So we have the whole structure. I would just mention a very simple story that we have... Uh, preventing corruption agency, fighting corruption agency, special prosecutor, and the court, which is dealing the whole complex story. I don't know if any other country have the same, the same structure of fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone would like to take an example from us. All right. So um, could you talk to us about the U.S. role in bringing Europe um, to be on the side of Ukraine on the conflict, especially Germany, because your country has been quite critical of its limited assistance, but now it has approved the deployment of those tanks. So mm -hmm. what kind of approach we're talking about here? You know, Americans understood finally that uh, talks with Russians uh, will not bring results. And the supplies of weapons to Ukraine is the option to stop Russian advancement, because we are expecting it, and to, do, to change the, uh, the battlefield for the benefit of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That is the necessary, because we are defending our country, we're dealing it with international law, and uh, we are the, uh, the victim of the aggression. That's the story. From Germany, there was support, support, but there was not support of the military. They mentioned on the scale which was necessary. So mm -hmm. now when the um, tank coalition was formed and uh, the, the idea was to supply mm -hmm. weapons uh, from the West, and really Americans did a great job with sending the first, uh, they adopted the first decision to adopt these Abrams, mm -hmm. to send the Abrams, and it opened the gate for the, for the Germans as well. So, you know, it's a NATO leading coalition with NATO countries, I wouldn't say NATO organization, but now it brings results in direct supplies to Ukraine of the tanks, which previously they had been thinking but about. But Mr. Ambassador, tanks will not arrive on the battlefield uh, at least a few months. How will U Ukrainian forces counter the stepped up Russian forces? Because I've been hearing that uh, Russians are beefing up their military presence in Donbass region. So uh, this, in the same manner like we have been doing last year. Are you preparing for a French offensive? Uh, it's, it's up to the general staff, so they will tell you exact story when the time will come, by deeds, not by words. Mm. Uh, but in general terms, the tanks will help us first to withstand the future attack. And secondly, we will be able to uh, create a superiority on some frontline mm -hmm. uh, sites and create the possibilities for the future victory, or at least to withstand future Russian attacks, which are really mm -hmm. endangering uh, Kiev and other types of uh, other cities uh, in Ukraine. So that's the story. So I understand your priority is to first liberate the occupied lands in Donbas region. So let's say if you liberated them, what comes next? The next, we should sit at the table and start talking about the peace terms. How about Crimea? Crimea should also be liberated. Because um, lately some high-level US officials have been suggesting Ukraine to recapture uh, Crimea. Is this an easy task? And let's say you're given the tanks and the fighter jets. Will you be able to cut off Russia's supply lines there and in some way isolate Crimea and liberate it maybe? Uh, yes, sure. It was already done by uh, striking on the bridge from Crimea. It was already done by liberating of Kherson. 
and counter offensive in uh, the, Zapor the Zaporizhia and um, Kharkiv region. Yes. So we have been successful and we proved that we could use effectively the weapons, which even Americans or Germans didn't know how to use properly well. Mm -hmm. That is the story. And if you will look at the practical results of what we have been doing with these weapons, I guess it will be in the books of the history of wars. Meanwhile, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has said the defeat of a nuclear power in a conventional war may trigger a nuclear power. What it's did he true. want to say, you mean? It's not are, true. Let's look are you at the concerned no. of a nuclear power because the no. situation in Zaporozhye is quite dangerous, We are not concerned right? about Russian position at all. Because what they are talking about, it's only the propaganda tool, it's only the internal consumption, uh, auditory, and uh, it is, so no one in, world, in the world now believed in Russian uh, statement. So, mm -hmm. first of all, there is uh, many examples in the history when the nuclear powers have lost their games, like Americans in Vietnam, uh, Soviet Union in uh, Afghanistan, uh, China with Vietnam. So, it was a number of cases where the great powers or the nuclear powers lost. First. Secondly, they are providing an unjust war. That is the story which is not the defensive war or the war for some, I don't know, it's not the conflict on the battlefield, but it's the war of destruction which they planned to distract Ukraine as, a, as a, the country and as a nation. Mm. Is, could, allow, could the world allow to happen it once again after the World War II or after the uh, wars in uh, Yugoslavia? Or who, who would care about Syria, but for example? People are afraid that the World War III can break out anytime soon. If world are war you? II, world War III could appear at any time, but it doesn't depend on Ukraine. Ukraine is dependent on its soil, Mm -hmm. And we will continue to do it up until the uh, last Russian soldier will remain on our uh, soil. That's the story clear and uh, there is a very so uh, good solidarity of Ukrainian society on that. So it's some argue that mm -hmm. the U.S. is waging a proxy war in Ukraine against Russia. Do you agree? No. It's hurting uh, Ukrainian society and hurting Ukrainian nation as a whole, which is suffering, which is fighting. And that was not the decision of Americans to defend Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Moreover, if we will uh, look at the beginning of war, there was a number of proposals to, uh, for the president to leave the country, uh, for, let's say, military forces that they will not survive, etc. Even if you look at the CNN or other American channels or European channels, they have not been promising that Ukraine will uh, defend, defend itself. No one has believed. Okay. Even we have an example when the German minister told to our ambassador, you will not survive three days, why should we support you? So, Mr. Ambassador, what do you make of Turkey's position? On one hand, Turkey supports and defends the territorial unity and political, integ inter political, integrity, territorial integrity and political unity of uh, Ukraine. But on the other hand, it has very deep-seated relations with Russia. You know, we have a very good relations established uh, uh, before and we have the strategic partnership based on the trust between two presidents. Mm -hmm. So it's going on and uh, the real friend is friend indeed. Friend indeed is friend in need. So we feel it from the very beginning of war with different levels of support, starting from political, characters, number of things mm -hmm. which we're not speaking about now, but also mediation. Mm -hmm. And to get results in mediation uh, process, and Turkey is, so the only, Turkey is the only country who reached the results. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a, uh, that need to be to have some contacts with Russia. So, in, in, and there was a parallel way of uh, cooperation. So, our strategic partnership and relations with Russia were in parallel tracks. So, no hard feelings. You know, uh, we have emotions mm -hmm. and we express them somehow. And Ukrainian society, from time to time, is thinking about what, why Erdogan is speaking to Putin. When I am answering questions from our, our media, I'm saying, look, maybe he is discussing the issue about our uh, imprisoned persons to release or grain corridor. Are you still hopeful corridor? about that? Because you said you believe Turkey could uh, arrange another uh, prisoner swap between Ukraine and Russia. Yes. Is there a common ground or suitable ground for such a deal again? Sure. Yes. Why? How we come? Have, we have been discussing this issue during last visit of our ombudsman. Mm -hmm. And uh, together, the, there were a number of bilateral meetings and trilateral, together mm -hmm. with uh, participation on Turkey's side. And now the discussions are going on how to do it properly in the practical terms, because we have thousands of people mm -hmm. imprisoned by Russians, uh, and dozens of uh, civilians, dozens of thousands of civilians, a lot of wounded soldiers, uh, also soldiers in the, in the ordinary jails. But why would Russia agree such a deal, especially because at they, a time when the, all first, of the Western alliance is backing no, you? No, it's, it's not about the Western alliance. It's okay. about a mediation of Turkey, which is uh, having good relations with uh, Moscow and uh, strategic partnership with Kyiv. Okay. And uh, they also have their own uh, in jail people in Ukraine. I mean, 
-hmm. prisoners of war, those who have been working with them, etc. So the swaps are one thing. The other thing is also release of uh, uh, those who are wounded, for example. Mm -hmm. Because and the opening a humanitarian corridor? Yes, that's the story we are okay. working now on. It. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ukraine has just recently received two uh, Bayraktar TB2 drones from Turkey. What difference? Yes, free of, free of charge. Free of charge? Yes. Mm, how does it make you feel? Very good. So, we have, we have, very, we have strategic partnership with Baikar Makina mm -hmm. and with two brothers we are working very closely and we established uh, this partnership before and the supplies and trainings and everything was very good. We even are planning to construct the factory. I know. Uh, that's that is strategic partnership. But look at the uh, bilaterally. Um, what could derail the strategic partnership? Look, it's mutually beneficial because, uh, for example, part of uh, airplanes from I mean the the, the UAVs they mm -hmm. are flying on Ukrainian engines. I know. That's the story which is uh, bringing two two countries together. And we also have a number of future projects which will be uh, suitable and very comfortable for uh, bilateral defense sector mm -hmm. and also strengthening ourselves. It's not also, we, traditionally we have been defend, uh, de dependent either on the East or on the West. Mm -hmm. Let's work together and be independent. That's the story. So how do you see this conflict evolve in next year, let's say in one year or two years? No, hopefully, Is this going to be another frozen conflict or you, you truly believe that you're going to emerge no, victorious? Our position is very clear. We need to clean up our land and not let frozen conflict to be continued. Because we have this frozen conflict for eight years. Yeah. At that time, Russians occupied 10% of our territory. Now they occupy 20. What they will do in a couple of years if we will frozen it. That's the story. So we should set up a just peace based on territorial integrity of Ukraine and punishment of those who have been conducted criminal acts. Uh, we should bring to responsibility uh, politi political leadership. And we also should take reparations from Russia. Okay. Who will pay for the reconstruction? Because it's the other topic for, 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 for our countries. Once this is over, I believe. No, but, but uh, Turkish companies have a lot, of, have a lot of possibilities to work in Ukraine on the reconstruction side. Yes. And Russians should pay for that. All right, Mr. Ambassador, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. me on Straight Talk. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much.